Today, I'm gonna to be explaining to you how I got insanely strong. These are the six things that I would focus on when I wanted to get as strong as possible. And I don't like to brag, I'm not a bragging type of person, but at one point in my powerlifting career, I was ranked fourth in New York in my weight class. The heaviest I've lifted, I've hit a six, and these are all in competition, a 601, I think a 601 or 602 deadlift. <laughs> In a meet at 194, I've done 372 paused bench in a powerlifting meet. Again, you have to come down to your chest, pause there, and then they tell you what the rack is. And I squatted 567, I forget what the kilos, what the numbers are. Again, all in competition at a 194 weight. Pretty impressive lifts considering that I am 100% natural, but I've been training for a long time. But these six things that I'm about to explain to you are the reasons why I was able to get so strong. So when your goal is to gain as much muscle as possible naturally, you have to have the strength in the background as well. A strong muscle is going to be a bigger muscle, so you need to be training for strength all the time. Because when someone can bench a lot of weight, typically that weight, that carryover from that strength will carry over into accessory lifts. So let's get right into it. Number one, the very first thing that I did, and I noticed a huge spike in my strength, was training the lifts multiple times a week. Two to three, preferably, was ideal. I've done more than that. I have done programs where I was doing, you know, benching four or five days a week, but I didn't really get much more out of that. So I, optimally, it's anywhere between two and three times per lift per week, or even per muscle group per week, you can say that as well. But I noticed that when I did anything less frequent than that, the strength gains just weren't there. I was just not seeing the exact what I needed to get to, and I would kind of always feel rusty by the next week. So like, for example, if I did squats on Monday and then the next time I did squats was Monday again, I would just kind of feel like rusty, like it just didn't feel right, everything didn't feel smooth. But when I was training the lifts two or three times a week, I could almost like grease that groove every couple of days. Anything less than two or three times a week is not optimal for strength gains. I don't think that that, even for a natural one time a week, I really don't think we'll do anything for you. For me, did zero. Uh, when I first started out, I did that and I got nothing out. You wanna be training multiple times per week, those muscle groups. And again, you can break that up however you want. You could do, you know, if you wanna get stronger legs and squat more, then you would do squats, you know, three times a week. Or you could do push, pull, doesn't really matter how you break it down as long as you're hitting the lifts that you wanna get better at multiple times a week. Number two, always, always, always train with progression. No matter what I did, no matter what program I was focusing on, no matter if I wanted to gain more muscle or lose body fat, I would always train with progression. Okay, today I did 110 pound dumbbells overhead press. Let's just say I did those for eight. Next time I did that, I would try to beat that in some sense. I would have to try to do that. And I always worked on trying to beat the logbook. And it works, you have to keep your form, <laughs> make sure your form stays good and you're not cheating most of the things. But if you stay consistent with that, that will definitely help. You need to be training with progression. You cannot just be haphazardly walking into the gym and what did I do last week and you know twiddling your thumbs on your phone. That's not going to help you at all. So you got to make sure again that you're always training with progression. Always making sure you're adding a little bit more weight to the bar every single time. And I would always strive to try to beat that record book. And it gets hard to do at a certain point. But as long as you're trying every time you're gonna make progress. Number three, and this strategy worked the best for me, I will link the program below so you can actually follow the same program that got me to being fourth in New York in my weight class. Uh, this is the exact program I use, so that link is below. But 
I would always undulate my reps. What worked for me the best was undulating my reps on a week on a weekly basis, essentially. So if I did, let's say I did 12 reps on Monday, maybe I did eight reps on Wednesday, and then maybe on Saturday I did five reps. But by undulating my reps and you know doing that week to week, I always got stronger because I was able to get stronger in different rep ranges. It gave me the best of both worlds. I could train for power, really getting really strong, or I can train for a little bit more for hypertrophy or growth. So it gave me that ability to do that. As soon as I switched my training to undulating my reps like that, my strength went through the roof. Again, when I just did a linear progression, you know, 12 reps for this week, 11 reps for this week, my strength just, it was just a slow, slow, it never really moved. As soon as I switched and I started undulating my reps, my strength exploded. And that same thing can happen for you too, naturally. Number four, it's a little bit different than lifting this one, but I ate higher protein. Your diet is everything. 70% of your results are going to come from what you eat. So you need to make sure you're eating higher protein than normal because that will help you recover. My diet was essentially, and I hate to say the word perfect, but I always hit my macros every day. I never really miss. So again, that just allowed me to recover better. It allowed me to come into the gym stronger every single time. And again, every time you go off your diet, your body has to kind of fight to help you recover. So again, if you're giving your body the proper nutrients it needs, you're going to be recovering a lot faster and then you're going to get stronger faster as well. Number five, I've never changed the movements. I don't get crazy with all these different types of movements that you could do. I stick with a handful of the ones that I like and the ones that I feel the most and the ones that help me get stronger and I ride those out. I rarely do anything different. And again, that's how you're really going to get strong because you're practicing that movement. I use the analogy in basketball. If I wanted to get better at shooting free throws, I'm not going to practice dunks or practice three pointers. That's not going to help me get a better free throw. If you want to practice getting better in free throws, you got to shoot free throws. So if I want to get better in the bench, my main work needs to come from actually bench pressing and not, you know, flies on the upper part, the lower part of the cable, you know, you get my point, but you want to make sure you're staying with those movements. And if I did want to add a movement in, let's say I wanted to do reverse lunges for legs. Say that was the movement I wanted to do. So, I would do that and then I would stick with that movement for a while. I wouldn't do it one week and then stop. I would keep that, that movement in until I got sick of it or I wanted to change it or whatever or if I realized it didn't work. Then I would scrap it and put something else in its place. But the volume always kind of stayed the same like that but the movements also stayed pretty much similar the entire time. So again, I never went, you know, one week bench pressing, the next week I was decline bench pressing. None of that, it was just bench press and then the accessory movements I use to help you get there. You can find that in the program below. Number six, I always trained higher volume. Again, for a natural lifter, that has been shown that higher volume will help you to get stronger and gain more muscle faster. But I also trained higher intensity for the accessory movements as well. So again, if I'm competing in a powerlifting meet, they check you for squats, bench press, and deadlift. So I would try to get stronger in those three movements. But not only those three movements, I would also do heavier and keep the intensity up in my accessory movements. So if I was doing barbell rows, I would work up to barbell rows with three, 400 pounds. So it's the same thing. I'm trying to always get stronger in every lift. And I believe that that helps keep you as a uh, better rounded athlete, better rounded strength wise, better preventive for injuries. I know a lot of guys, if they compete in powerlifting meets, they go into a meet, and they just train those movements. They'll just do like bench for the day and then leave. You gotta get stronger with everything else because again, if you have a weak point in a bench press, you need to be able to address that weak point and the only way to do that is with a little bit more volume and training, those, training a little bit more intensely those accessory movements. So that's it. That's how I was able to, again, achieve these kinds of lifts and essentially deadlift almost you know, three times my body weight. Well, it was three times, a little over three times my body weight. I was very close to squatting twice my body weight. No, 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 more than twice. Sorry, three times my body weight. <laughs> and uh, bench, I think that was at two times body weight. I don't know the math on that. But, you know, the goal is always to get to a 405 bench. It's like my ultimate goal. But again, if you want to get as strong as possible, follow these six principles and they'll help you get to that promised land. The main thing is you just need to stay consistent. I hope this helped you. Check out the program below and I'll catch you guys on the next one.